Hello and welcome to the Game Changer series of interviews for Global Entrepreneurship Week in 2016 in association with Business Crowd. Today I'm delighted to be interviewing Claire Greenwood and Claire is a serial entrepreneur who runs two businesses and is going to talk to us today about her journey in business and what led her to that and her experiences of franchising, which may be a model that you may be considering for your own business. So welcome, Claire. Hi, Laura. Thank you for having me. Um, so Claire, you run more than one business. Do you want to tell us about the businesses that you've created in your time? Yeah, absolutely. So I basically spent my um, whole life in the world of dance. So I've, I've always been involved with dance. Uh, grew up learning it and then went on to become a professional dancer which of course has quite a short um, lifespan because you, you kind of finish you know in your mid late twenties uh, so it's a question of what do you do then um, and I always knew that I would t end up teaching dance and that's what I wanted to do ultimately so I set about starting up some dance classes in my local area um, I knew nothing about business absolutely nothing I would just danced all my life uh, so I started them up and they grew and grew and grew and snowballed into uh, Rise Studios, which is the dance and performing arts school that I now run. Um, and in the process of doing all of that, I realized there was a gap in the market for dance classes for very young children. Um, and with all the kind of talk about obesity in children and overweight children and all of that, um, I thought that there needed to be something to fill that gap to get young children involved in dance at a very early age. Mm -hmm. uh, so I came up with the idea of Tappy Toes, which is a dance and movement syllabus for babies and toddlers. Um, so I carried on teaching my dance classes and I introduced to the baby and toddler clinical area. Um, and they just were really, really popular and kind of got oversubscribed. So I started in another area um, and that got oversubscribed. Um, and it just got busier and busier to the point where I realized actually this is something that should be available all over the UK because it's such a great a great thing um, and that's when I kind of looked into uh, the franchise side of things mm. and it taps into as you say quite rightly a need the things that are there on the social and health agenda at the moment and yeah. so obviously that makes it quite popular. Were you able to access anything around enterprise funding to help you get that initiative started or did you bootstrap um, it from the success of Rise? Yeah, no, to be honest, I, I never um, borrowed any money or had any funding or anything like that for either of the businesses. Um, with Rise Studios, it was a very sort of, it was a, a steady process of just building up the business. So there wasn't a lot of expense to, to sort of outlay that it just um, you know as it grew I then had more expenses to make it grow even more but initially I didn't sort of plow thousands of pounds into it um, and like I said I wasn't a business person so I didn't go into it thinking I'm going to build a big business I went into it thinking I want to teach children to dance mm. um, and the business side came later so I've massively learned along the way um, how to run a business and you know it's only now I'm, I'm sort of 10 years down the line of when I very first started Rise um, and it's only kind of now that I think yeah I'm, I'm a businesswoman now I'm a business person and I kind of know a bit more about it. Mm, mm. And so lots of things that you've learned along the way because as you say you need to learn fairly quickly I guess what what the things are that are involved in running a business from the finances because when you start you're doing a lot of these yeah. things yourself when did you decide it was the point that you needed to begin to get some support and bring professionals or outsource pieces of work yeah sure so with rise studios the bigger it got obviously the more admin was involved and i quickly realized that there was no way I could sort of wear all the hats so to speak you know I was teaching every night I was doing all the invoicing I was doing all the marketing um, and you know you're not superwoman you can't do it all um, I also had two children with it you know in the last few years as well so um, it's just impossible so I got 
I got some help in the form of um, some ladies to help me with admin and um, a couple of people doing reception and that kind of thing with Rise Studios, um, which took the pressure off. And then when I decided, right, I'm going to make that step into franchising, I hired a company that did all the contracts um, and helped me to package it up and create uh, you know, the, the operations manual and that kind of thing. So I had a lot of help with that, which going back to your funding question, I did fund from you know, the success of the classes that were already running. So again, I didn't borrow any money to do that. Um, yeah, you've reinvested um, profits to grow the business. Yeah, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. um, the one thing I didn't want to do was to get into huge debt, and then you feel so much pressure that you have to make it work. Um, you know, this way around, it was I, I wasn't really I didn't really have anything to lose. Um, so, so yeah, so that's how the the franchise model started. I I put all of that together. Uh, started doing a little bit of advertising on social media and on on specific websites because I do have a, a very specific target market of people that would suit running a Tappy Toes franchise, um, you know, which is typically your working mom, that kind of thing. Um, so I could be quite um, specific on the advertising that I did and I managed to get people interested and, and then had meetings and sorted out my first franchise and it kind of grew from there um, and recently I've well recently I say recently it's been 12 months now I took on a business partner who came on board and she is Miss Businesswoman who kind of knows more intricate um, more intricately the business side of things um, that now helps me to deal with that in the franchise part of the business. Mm. Mm. And the thing that's really important about franchising, as well as the process and you say the legal and the contract side, which is very, very specialist, yeah. um, and I'd also recommend most people look at working with specialist um, lawyers, accountants, um, yeah. that understand that world because it is important to get it right, particularly um, yeah. as more people come into self-employment. Um, the other thing that's really important with franchising is that right fit of the right people for your business and brand. How do you go about selecting the right people? What are the qualities that are important yeah. to you? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question because with my business, it is very much going to be based on, on the personality of the person running the classes and it just wouldn't work if if you offered it to anyone, you know, we wouldn't let just anyone come in and buy a Tappy Toast franchise just to sell a franchise. Um, they have to be the right personality and and to be honest, it is mostly about that, the personality. So, you know, you have the initial chat on the phone, you send over the um, franchise prospectus for them to have a look through to make sure they understand what's involved and if they're still interested, then um, the first thing to do would be meet face to face and have a have a good old chat um, about it and you know why they want to go into it and that kind of thing. Um, find out their past experiences and what kind of things they were doing before. Um, for example, one of our franchisees was a primary school teacher, so that's a perfect match for us because she knows young children, she knows how to deal with them, um, and that was kind of more important in some ways than you know, than it being a dancer coming on board because the children are so young. Um, I can train somebody up to be able to teach them to dance, but I can't train somebody up to have the right personality to deal with them. Mm. So really important to get the right people on board. So really it's important that it's somebody that loves people, loves working with children, um, but who's also yeah. wanting to learn and develop a business but perhaps without needing all of those business skills because that's the central support that you provide yeah exactly that's that's the thing sometimes you'll get somebody with the perfect personality for it but they have absolutely no business experience and no clue where to start um, but that's the great thing about buying into a franchise is that we've already been there and done that so we know how to advise them and support them in every way um, so Again, I go back to the lady that was a primary school teacher that came on board. You know, her strengths were in the teaching of the classes, but she didn't know anything about the back end of, of running a business. Um, and that's where we've had to come in and, and really support her with that. Whereas another lady, another franchisee that came on board, 
uh, was more sort of she'd done a lot of marketing she knew how to build and grow a business but she didn't have any experience with the dance and we've had to support her um, more on that side so yeah it's it's um, just important to get the right personalities on board Mm. and I guess are these all women that are running the businesses then around having their own families As yeah I think house? that's <laughs> yeah exactly I think that's what what kind of draws people in, into the tappy toes business is because it is so family friendly um you know I have two small children myself and I'm still teaching classes and running the business and it just fits in along along with them um you can choose your class times, you can choose whether you want to work in the school holidays or not. Um, so a, a lot of our mums, they will just run classes term time because they've got their little ones off school in the summer holidays and they want to spend the time with them. And that's absolutely fine. We're really family flexible. Um, and then there's other ones that don't have children yet that are quite happy to run kids' parties through the summer, to do summer camps, and you know they, they want to continue. Um, through summer holidays so it can work both ways that's great and that's something that's becoming more important now with businesses I think to recognize the need to be family flexible and that's not just for working mothers but for working fathers as well have you seen a change in the business in terms of I suppose over the last few years um, the number of dads getting involved on the customer side Yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, we do have, you know, when I first started, I'd say it was majority mums and grandmas that would bring their little ones to Tappy Toes. Um, and now we do have dads coming along and it's great, you know, we get them joining in with us and having loads of fun. And it's nice to, to see that mm. and have that mix. Wonderful. Um, what would you say have been your biggest learnings over the years since starting your business? Um... Good question. I think the hardest thing for me has just been kind of making sure um, all the the admin side of things are done correct. You know, I, I started with sort of hand creating every invoice, you know, um, on my computer on like a Excel sheet or whatever, to, to having a proper sort of bespoke system that does all of that now at the press of a button and you know, um, when I first started, I couldn't, I didn't have the facility to email like everybody that attends the Epping classes or everybody that attends the Ricky classes. I'd have to like physically input all their email addresses, and everything was so time consuming because um, I just didn't have the knowledge of how to do those things. So, those are the types of things that I've learned along the way that are huge, hugely time saving um, mm. and life savers for me now. So. Yeah, so embracing like that. the technology that's out there really to support a business. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's difficult when you know, like me, I've come from a dance background. Like I said, I've had no business experience, so it is hard to find sort of the support. Like, who do you go to 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 learn this stuff? So for me, I've I've just had to pick it up along the way, and and kind of you know, social media is a help now because you see all these things about. Um, join this webinar to learn about this and that and there's lots of free stuff out there and information out there that you can google so I've had to do it that way which I think is why it's so great if you come on board as a franchisee you don't have to do all of that side of it it's already been done and you just get told it so mm. yeah I think that's a good thing about buying a franchise rather than setting up on your own mm. Absolutely, absolutely. So how are all of the businesses doing? How are they growing with your franchise, franchisees to date? Yeah, fantastic. I mean, I I only started franchising um, a couple of years ago, and um, at the time I was pregnant, so don't ask me why I decided to choose that moment, but I did. Um, and we now have six franchisees on board, um, so we plan to, to expand that, of course, and that's sort of where our focus is going over the next 12 months we want to, to build that um, because I just love for every every toddler to have the chance to come and, and dance at a tappy toes class you know it's such fun and it's good for their health and it's lovely for a parent and toddler to bond um, so to be able to bring it to the masses would be my dream mm. and I think actually as well that early thing around coordination um, movement and singing and dance 
is really helpful for the child's development yeah. when they go into school as well. They're learning how to follow instructions. It helps to create um, the pathways for the parts of the brain that learn and retain information very well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, you know, the same as with kind of music and that sort of thing. Um, it does develop children in, in every which way, not just to be able to dance. Um, you know, they're, they're building social skills by meeting these other children in the class and learning how to kind of share props with them or line up and wait their turn. And um, yeah, it's definitely a life lesson and they're learning life skills, not just how to be a dancer. Mm. Mm. Well, that's lovely. And to have created a business that really allows you to follow your passion as well must be very, very rewarding. It is, yeah. It's it's absolutely incredible. And to come in and teach the classes where, you know, you have a really shy child with no confidence that won't leave mummy's side and within three or four weeks, you know, they're coming, they're running into you, holding your hand, doing everything you do. Um and it's it's beautiful, yeah, it's absolutely great to watch that. Um, it's definitely a lifestyle business, you know, I don't feel like I'm working most of the time, so I can't complain. <laughs> mm, wonderful. Well, thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed today and for sharing your experiences with our listeners. It's been an absolute pleasure, Claire. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs>